Rabi Musa Kwankwaso was a two-time governor of Kano State. He is currently representing the Kano State Central Senatorial District at the National Assembly. He is a presidential aspirant under the platform of the Opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP. You have declared your intention to run for president in 2019, and you'll be running again against incumbent President Buhari, who had defeated you during the 2015 APC primaries. Why do you think you stand a chance against President Buhari? Well, first of all, let me start by thanking all our members of Concursia across the country, and also thank all members of our party, PDP, for making today's uh, occasion a very big uh, success. And uh, let me also say that so far so good. I'm so happy that I'm back to our party, uh, the PDP, the party that we labored to establish uh, almost 20 years ago. Now, this August is exactly 20 years. And um, I'm so happy that we are very much well received by the party leadership at national level and of course uh, by our supporters uh, across the country. Now the issue of uh, contest, I'm happy to say that uh, in 2015 there was a primary election in Lagos and uh, I don't want to go into the details but of course at least going by what was being declared, I came uh, number two. And I can tell you so much water passed under the uh, river or under the bridge. And uh, I'm happy to say that the general mood in this country is for uh, voters to ensure that the change is also changed in 2019. And God's willing, uh, the one with the election uh, in this country, PDP, will emerge the winner uh, in the general election. If you win the PDP primaries, you'll be running against President, likely, of course, President Muhammadu Buhari, who is at, allegedly getting an automatic ticket from the APC. He's been, the party of the APC claims Boko Haram, the fight against insurgency, corruption has been their major um, selling point for the administration. What is it that you are offering Nigerians to counter that argument? You see, um, the automatic ticket is a problem. Those of us who are in PDP for 16 years know the implication of going for a primary election, very competitive uh, primary election. Uh, we had it in 1999, 2003, 2007, and 2011. And all those four primary elections, uh, automatically PDP was winning the general election. PDP only lost the election when they decided not to do primary election in 2015. And the reverse is completely the case uh, for uh, uh, the incumbent president. From 2003, 2007, 2011, he never had primary election. And he never won. The only time he won election was when we were involved and we participated in the primary election in Lagos. And that was the only time uh, the incumbent won an election. So you can see that there is direct correlation between primary elections and, of course, winning uh, the general election uh, and so on and so forth. So, uh, to me, no primary election, no general election, going by the statistics I told you that. Nigeria is currently facing an economic crisis. Let me quote the British Prime Minister who is in the country at the moment. And she said that 87 million Nigerians are extremely poor as of today. And 
the Buhari administration since bringing Nigeria out of recession has failed to record GDP growth. What would you be doing differently? Well, we're happy that um, the economists are coming up with their figures. For those of us who are practical economists, I can tell you that that figure can be right. Why? Because we live with the people, we see them, we talk to them, because I'm one of the few politicians who have an opportunity to relate with people at grassroots level, to relate with people at the middle level, and also relate with our friends and colleagues at the highest level of the polity. So I believe that uh, uh, that can be correct in the sense that even practically if we go out, we can see it. Most people are not uh, eating. Uh, most people cannot get employment. Uh, most people in this country today are not even thinking of all those uh, luxuries they are struggling to see how they can see tomorrow because of the insecurity. So all these things put together, I have no doubt in my mind that that figure is a figure that uh, people should take seriously. In practical terms, how would you lift the economy and grow the GDP, for instance? Now, you see, there are so many ways to it. Um, the first and foremost, uh, government, especially at national level, have to bring in policies that will encourage uh, people to bring in uh, investment from outside the country. Government at this level must encourage people to invest in the economy. And of course, government has to itself uh, spend money in projects and programs that can create job opportunities for the people in, uh, in the country. And of course, above all, government must stamp Westerners, corruption in particular, at all levels. And once that is done, you find so many things are happening people who go back to work and so on and so forth. Of course, while spending, uh, government spending, you have to look at the key uh, issues in production, especially the energy, road infrastructure, health, education, and so on and so forth. And of course, uh, encourage people themselves, even the attitude of the people is very important. Uh, government has to carry or has to carry everybody along and that's a sort of uh, arrangement that is lacking in this government. And that is why uh, many people are finding it difficult to make any input into the economy because they are excluded. Let's say we want to put a number to it. What GDP growth rate should Nigerians expect from a Rabiu Kwankwaso presidency, for instance? Well, certainly government, our government will work so hard to ensure that there is growth. Uh, the GDP is being improved. And, uh, of course, we will knock out all those figures that uh, uh, will arrive at a particular figure of the GDP. But what I can tell you is that all those uh, areas of production, areas of improvement, areas of energy, areas of infrastructure, and so on and so forth, all those must come into play so that the uh, uh, GDP in this country certainly must go much higher than we have to do. Your successor in Kano State, Governor Abdullahi Ganduji, has accused you of leaving about 350 billion Naira debt. Is see, that, was that what happened? I will tell you. You see, many people think that politics is a dirty game. Right. We I don't think so see too. It from there. Politics is a very clean game. But people can play it dirty. At a certain level, people at a certain age, people at certain level in life must not tell lies. I can tell you, I, Rabbi Musa Kokoso, never, never borrowed one naira from one individual, from bank in Nigeria, or any bank in this world. Never, because it is our policy not to borrow money from anybody. And therefore, for eight years that I was governor, I never borrowed anything. I can tell you that I have seen those figures, and many people 
were deceived. I saw so many people, even on some of these uh, television stations, wasting their time to make commentaries and so on. But this is absolute lies. It's not true. What they have done in Canon, according to my information, was look at all the contracts that were awarded and they add them together and came up with a figure. And that is not debt. What you are talking about is probably a budget or probably projects that were being awarded to contractors. If you add them, you get whatever figure. But the fact of the matter, in real terms, what we have on the ground or what we had on the ground was that even contractors that were given projects collected uh, 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 some money and the certificates or the work that were, they had done was not even up to what they were given. In other words, they were owing government money. But if you put all the contracts, then you get whatever billions you want to get. But the fact of the matter is, I challenge anybody, not only in Kano, but anywhere in this country, to come up with any bank or any individual or contractor that will borrow money. We never borrowed and we will not borrow. At the, at the national level, how would you address Nigeria's current debt profile? It's at $21 billion at the national level. How would you address it as president of this country? Now, if there are commitments being made by governments, of course, as a responsible government, we stand by that. But the fact of the matter is, I personally know that there is a lot of money in this country. The money that is enough to do so much for our people. But what is important, on the other hand, is to make sure that wastages are being minimized, if possible, stopped. And once that is done, like we did in Kano, in Kano, we took time to change the narration. Of course, in most states, even at this level, you find government doing so much on retirement. And that's the biggest mistake. In Kano, we were able to make it 25% recurrent and 75% capital. And once you go by that, everybody will see the results outside there. So the key thing, the first thing that each government, either at the national level or at state level or even local government, what is important is to ensure that wastages are stopped. And these wastages are everywhere. The difficulty is our leaders have no time. No time to keep their eyes on the activities of their ministries, departments, and agencies. That is very critical. And as long as you don't do that, no matter how much money you have on the ground, no matter how much money you borrow from locally and internationally, definitely you won't find the results because they will go into the drains. And that is what we are having today uh, at states and even at the federal level. One of your widely reported achievements in Kano State, for instance, is the pilot scholarship scheme, where a lot of students, a lot of Kano indigents were sent abroad to school. And a report, however, revealed that most of these pilots are now teachers because they still do not have where to work. Do you still consider well, that project me, a success? Let me give you the bigger picture. Right. In four years in Kano, we sponsored more than 2,600 students to 14 countries in the world. And most of them are now back. They have completed their course. Are they teachers? Some of them are teachers, of course. And out of that 2,600 plus, we had 100 pilots who spent a lot of money to train them. Now they have completed their courses and they are back. Some of them I know and I'm sure you know, they have got a job. But let me tell you, the training of pilots is a special training. They are global students. 
they are not people who are coming to drive taxis or buses. These are people who can go to anywhere in the world and look for a job. And the idea of education is not just to train you to build your capacity and come and do one particular work. That is the idea of education. It makes you flexible. It opens your horizon to identify areas that can be useful to you and be useful to your society. We have done our own. We have trained them. We have given them the education. If they like, they can go and teach. If they like, they go and look for a job. Maybe they go into businesses and so on and so forth. And in any case, whatever they are going to do, now even if it is to work with government, it is not my, now my responsibility. Government is a continuous uh, process. It's not like you are governor, you have to train them, you have to make sure that they get a job. If they don't get a job, you shouldn't come and ask me why they didn't get a job. We have I know is that we have trained them. Mm. And uh, if we wanted, we could have spent on the money. So we are so happy mm -hmm. that they have been trained and they are there, we built their capacity, they are well exposed, and uh, they are getting, many of them have got jobs. We have been told the, petrol sub the petroleum subsidy is back. The NNPC calls it under recovery. However, I understand that this has become the only realistic way for Nigeria to keep um, petrol PMS at 145 naira per liter. Would you remove subsidy at the risk of increasing the price of petrol for Nigerians when no. you become president? No, you see, the issue of uh, subsidy right. uh, is an issue that each government must look at it uh, very critically. Because whatever you do, left or uh, head or tail, certainly there are some economic consequences that will uh, come up. So uh, we are looking at the issue of subsidy. Uh, we will definitely tackle the issue of subsidy, but realities and facts must be on the table. And when that happens, uh, we'll come up with a position. Okay, but you've not concluded on that yet? No, not quite. We're working on it. Some of your fellow aspirants, for instance, in the PDP, um, the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, he has suggested that they would privatize the NNPC. Is this something you also suggest? You're also thinking while you're considering all of this? Options? Yeah, you see, I personally believe that the government has limitations in doing uh, business itself. It is not in every business that the government will put its fingers. But And, and at the same time, uh, government has to keep its eyes on national assets to make sure that they are not being uh, misused or stolen. Uh, and that is why uh, such... Um, facilities or assets that the country have must be looked into. But definitely there are areas that private sector must be involved. And certainly there is need to work out those details. Every Nigerian is looking forward to a government that will fix the power, the epileptic, or for some people, no power at all situation in Nigeria. What would you do to fix this problem? Now, you see, uh, there is need for huge investment in power sector. There is need for diversifying. Now, as we have it, we have few sources of electricity in this country. Of course, uh, we have the hydro, uh, mainly from the dams. We have the thermal and so on and so forth. Government, our government will look at all other possibilities, including the solar uh, uh, power, including the wind, including the coal. I'm just, I was just coming from uh, the east now. And uh, we had a lot of uh, coal in that part of the country, and even in the north. And these are areas that the government has to keep its eyes in terms of generating electricity itself, and of course, transmission and distribution, so that each and every uh, uh, town and villages should uh, enjoy this facility, which is very critical. For development. What does true federalism mean to you? Do you support restructuring? Yes, you see the issue of restructuring, as we all know, depends on the individuals. Some people, when you ask them, what do you mean by the restructuring? They will tell you one is devolution of power from 
uh, the uh, federal to states and local governments. Some will even tell you that the presidential system is not working for us or it is too expensive. Some will say we want to go back to parliamentary system of government. Some will tell you we want to control our resources. Whatever we have, unless we want to have it, and there well, probably we can pay taxes and so on and so So it depends on who you are talking to. So, but I can tell you, as far as I'm concerned, all this is within a democrat. Our doors will be open for all this to come uh, into uh, a, dis a discussion. And of course, we have already have structures on the ground, democratic structures. Uh, we have the due process, we have the constitution. Of course, together we can go through the due process and make sure that all these uh, issues are being properly uh, addressed. What are your thoughts on the creation of state police? Well, there are many people that uh, believe that uh, we require uh, uh, state police. Um, but I can tell you, as Ravi Pongkosu, especially with the experience of Anona, even when they don't have state police, they are struggling to use national police, federal government, to support them to stop me from going to Kano. And uh, you can imagine if they own the, the police in Kano. Uh, many people, especially governors, when they are sick and sit, they would never imagine that one day they would leave that office. Some of them are struggling to get police, uh, state police, to win election for them. Whether they win election or they lose election, one day they will leave, and then one day they will become uh, former governors or former this or that. So the issue of uh, uh, state police is very much debatable. Uh, we have uh, been participating in the debate whether to have uh, state police, especially during our consumer conference in 1992-95. But at that time, we felt that the best arrangement was uh, national police. And let me tell you, most of these agitations are coming as a result of weak leadership, incompetent leadership. What we have on the ground today in our constitution, one cannot say is 100% perfect. But I can tell you with a very strong and powerful leadership in this country, all the sort of mess that you are seeing today, which is leading to people to ask for this and or ask for that, because most people would not want to have to accept uh, uh, um, weakness. Mm. And they keep on moving from one pole to another, looking for an excuse to hang that particular um, weakness. So, I can tell you comfortably that with good leadership in this country, I can assure you that most of these agitations that we there today will be as new as the past. You served as defense minister under the administration of um, former President Olusha Gwabasanjo. There have been a lot of outcry about the headsman crisis across the country. What would you do about that? You see, just like I told you, what we have today is the weakness of leadership. I have reasons to interact with farmers and I have reasons to interact with the herdsmen because as leaders we have to work so hard to ensure that all these issues uh, are resolved, especially that they affect human lives and properties. Now I can tell you that one of the issues that we have today is that people are not being carried around. I'm sure there are so many people across the country who have got a lot of information to give to the leadership, but unfortunately, they, they, they have no access. They are blocked. And once the government is cut off, it becomes only hanging there on its own. And that is what we, what, we, what we say here. People are even afraid to go and tell the authorities what they know, or what they saw. Why? Because one, they may not have the access. Two, even those that have access, uh, uh, they don't know the consequences. And that was why in my speech, probably you are not there, I made it very clear that we encourage uh, citizens of this country
to come up with an information, especially security information, and they will be protected if they give out their information. Because you see, it's one thing to have military, it's one thing to have uh, 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 equipment and so on and so forth. But if you don't have the intelligence, you may even eat and dine with a criminal you don't know. You need information. And that is what they are liking. So, I can assure you that with good leadership, with good interaction, with consultations, uh, especially with the traditional rulers, with the farmers, with the hardens, uh, with pressmen like you and everybody, I can assure you this is something that can be stopped. But even under that type of circumstance, you still have criminals here and there. Those criminals should be dealt with according to the, the law. That's why you have the military, that's why you have the police, that's why you have other paramilitary, and so on and so forth, to deal with such situations. But that is the last resort. Send the military is the last resort. But today, unfortunately, we have military uh, working like police in almost all the states of the federal Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you.